Hello, I'm Cochina Rude. And I'm Mama Celeste. And welcome to Anal, Anal About, About My, My Health. Health. Cochina, have you ever done drugs before? I will neither confirm nor deny that statement. We can't have a conversation without drugs without talking about harm reduction. What's harm reduction? Harm reduction is a philosophy. It's a lifestyle. It is emphasizing the role that somebody plays in their own autonomy. It's about meeting people where they're at. Um, it can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Whatever people decide for themselves, they are their own experts in their own drug use. Absolutely. Cochina, I don't know anybody who's done drugs, do you? I think I know one or two people. <laughs> Is it us? You don't remember? No. Oh, I don't remember either. People do drugs all the time, Cochina. I mean, that's like what harm reduction is really about, right? Is like the fact that you can't get away from the fact that people are on drugs all the time. Including right now. Including right now. Harm reduction is all about people living their lives every day, and sometimes it has to do with drugs and sometimes it doesn't. And our role as like uh, allies to people who use drugs is really just to provide them with information and with resources um, and make sure that they're using drugs in a safe and responsible way. A lot of the times I feel like there's a lot of shame or fear or of people who use drugs and like when you see someone using drugs on the street like that's just because that person doesn't have access to like a safe space where they can be like using drugs in a safe way. A lot of the stigma that has to do with using drugs uh, ties into a lot of uh, other social issues that um, are not new to us. You know, addiction, things as, such as poverty, um, cleanliness, uh, the spread of disease. There's a lot of reasons why people look down on people who use drugs. So someone who uses drugs is the expert on what they know to be to work for themselves or to be true to themselves. Again, those are these are decisions that we have to respect if we're going to um, work together. It's a start of a great conversation. Um, <laughs> we've got some special guests here with us today. Why don't we uh, ask them more about uh, some of the harm reduction responses to people who use drugs? Uh, I here, can't wait here in the in the Bay Area. Let's go see our friend Alex. Alex Locust, everybody. Oh. Hi, Alex. Tell us, what are you anal about today? That's a loaded question. I'm anal about people using drugs and alcohol and not feeling bad about it. Hmm. I see uh, you work at Stonewall, right? Can you tell us more about that? Yeah. I'm a counselor coordinator at the Stonewall Project, which is a program at the AIDS Foundation. And we provide harm reduction counseling to the queer community and just try to provide a space where people can be educated about uh, harm reduction strategies and just provide a space to get community and support in, in anything they might need. What do you think are some of the issues um, pertaining to LGBT people? And I know you work a lot with uh, POC as well. Doing this work with the queer community, I hear a lot of questions, right, about like, am I worthy? Where do I belong? Am I the only one struggling? When will you text me back? And I feel like, you know, harm reduction helps people realize that like, drugs and alcohol serve a purpose. If you need that help, we can figure out tools to answer those questions. And if you want to make changes, then we're a resource to do that. I think people of color within the queer community particularly face all of those uh, challenges, but especially face barriers around racism and you know structural inequalities that lead to health disparities. So we've created things like groups specifically for queer people of color, like Free to Be and Crystal Clear. And we get to talk about masculinity, intimacy, right. having sex and, and using, and just providing a space to, to talk about that. Cause sometimes we hear a lot that communities of color have a lot of stigma around counseling and, and that space and, and systems right of, of health feeling unsafe or feeling like they're not welcome. So we try to, to carve out that space and to honor, you know, that specific need and, and make a space where people can kiki and cut up and, and have fun too, because it's, it's really important to, to feel support from your community as well. Thank you, Alex. So that's uh, what's happening in our neck of the woods, but let's get some global perspective from our friends at the International Network of People Who Use Drugs. Uh, thank you very much for having me. My name is Jay and I'm the Deputy Director of Input, the International Network of People Who Use Drugs. Uh, here at Input, we exist to defend the rights and promote the health of communities of people who use drugs all over the world. And people who use drugs face 
endemic, uh, systemic and systematic violations of their human rights, uh, their right to health, uh, the right to the highest attainable standard of, of health and bodily integrity, uh, the right to life, the right to security of person, to name but a few. People who use drugs are subject to extrajudicial killings, they are subject to the death penalty for drug offences, and people who use drugs are denied healthcare and service provision to which they're entitled, namely harm reduction, needle and syringe programmes, and opiate substitution. And the opposition to these services and this healthcare provision for people who use drugs is driven principally by the stigmatization that people who use drugs experience all over the world and by the social exclusion and discrimination faced by these communities. So at Input, we exist to amplify the voices of uh, communities of people who use drugs all over the world that Input exists to represent. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you.